Welcome to Untold Stories of Innovation, where we amplify untold stories of insight, impact, and innovation. Powered by Untold Content, I'm your host, Katie Trout taylor Our guests today are Debbie Saviano and Stacey Shefflin. They are co-founders of Women's Leadership Live. I am so grateful to have you here on the podcast and to share all of your incredible work with Home Shopping Network, QVC, Where Women Create, and, um, and your national tour as well this year. So thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for having us. Our pleasure. So tell us a little bit more about Women's Leadership Live and what its mission is. So, so this is Debbie Saviano. I'll go first. So to sum it up, we offer expert business training for committed entrepreneurs, primarily women. But as Stacy would tell you, we have 20% enlightened men. And our goal <laughs> is to always have them be the best in their category, of their industry, profession, whatever. But uh, it's our so sixth it's, year, which is amazing. It's Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. And I came from a, my first career was in education. I was a school principal of five different campuses, K to 12. And I, Linda joked yesterday that I could keep a job. They just moved me around for change and innovation, actually, <laughs> ironically enough. <laughs> and uh, we all came together six years ago. But uh, my, my love, my uh, passion is social media and digital space because I think it brings us together uh, on a global perspective, if you will. We can all be connected physically, digitally, and it, it enables us to do things we never could have done years ago. I'm happily married. My high school sweetheart I have two children, grown children, and my mind just went blank. Five granddaughters. Five. <laughs> oh wow! Five. All all, all girls. All, all girls. girls. Do they love? Do they already understand that uh, that grandma is empowering oh, women yeah. around the world? They do. They're very very proud of grandma. So, and then Stacy and I met like eight eight years ago. That's correct. Eight years ago, when she hired me to do her social media because she was on TV, is on TV, and so I came on to do that with her. And then as girlfriends do, we got introduced to each other and we started Women's Leadership Live. Stacey, I'll let you take it. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. De- I'm, I, every day, as Debbie always will say, we're life learners. And she truly is. She teaches me something about social media every day. <laughs> I'm still learning, Katie. I'm yes. Telling you. Yeah. Aren't we all? We're all. <laughs> if you're not so a rapid ever, learner. It's like ever changing, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. So, yes. Love that we have Women's Leadership Live together, and we have so many amazing women in our community. But I've been the founder of two beauty brands, YBF Beauty, your best friend. Yes. Product she's been your best friend about. And Models Prefer was my first brand. I was 12 years at QVC, now 12 glorious years at HSN. Our networks are now under one brand called Curate, QVC uh, purchased HSN back in December of 2019. So now we're a one global brand. Um, I've engineered 24 years of record success, proud to say, humbled every day by it, being the number one global cosmetic brand now on eight networks in 28 countries, all live TV. And we love the opportunity to be able to have so much reach. We reach about 380 million women across the globe. And people are like, what's that look like? And well, HSN's in the US, QVC and Ideal World are our networks in the UK. So that's England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I love, love, love. And the TSC group, they're out of Canada. We've got TVSN. It's our TV shopping network in Australia and New Zealand. And then we're on HSE 24. That's Home Shopping Europe 24 in Italy, Germany, and Austria. Citrus Dubai, Citrus TV in Dubai with seven United Arab Emirate countries and live shopping now in Moscow and Russia. And I don't know where we'll go next, wherever they call us. That's I'm right. Sure that she can just, she can just take those off. <laughs> she goes so off and she can just every week, boom, 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 all those stations. So it's very, it's, it's, it's humbling. But what we found about women, Katie, is it doesn't matter what culture right. or country we're in. We all want to learn from one another. And that's how we started women's leadership live where we could help women take their brand, their products, and their service to the next level. It's incredible to me that both of you have had so much success in your individual careers, and you've both established brands to great renown, and yet you're making time to build into an organization that is truly founded upon a sole purpose of empowering others and being able to create mentorship relationships. What drives you to want to share your story in a, in a mentoring fashion in that way? 
Go ahead, Debbie. Yeah, we, we both get so, so excited. excited. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Anytime the three of us talk, we, we yeah, tend exactly. to giggle we, a lot. We learn, <laughs> and we learn something from you every time we talk Absolutely. to you, Katie. You're such, Vice you versa. are such a pay it forward kind of gal. Right. And we love seeing that because that's the success that all our journeys have when we help and take one another by the hand and not lead, but lift one another up. And you are a great component of that. Absolutely. Great role model. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you ask the question, Katie, and to what Stacy's point is that you really do embody that because we do what we do because we both have daughters and I have granddaughters mm -hmm. and we only walk this journey once and we both believe passionately that you should use your skills and your expertise and your experiences to help others. And so we want the world to always, you know, when you leave this world, when you've done this walk, you want to have left something behind that made a difference for people. And for us, for us, it's women. And, and we just feel like it's so important to use our passions and, and our uh, background and our experiences to help others. And so we're blessed to have the, 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 variety of experiences and backgrounds and we bring all that together for one for one roadmap if you will absolutely to help women. yeah because none of us ever tell each other how to prepare ourselves for the self-doubt we have as business right. owners whether you're in a corporate job or whether you're an entrepreneur uh, there's a period in the quiet in the night debbie likes to say that we all sit there and think about was my day fulfilling for myself and the people around me yes yeah absolutely, absolutely. You know, one of the things I've been really excited to ask you both about it is kind of along that line. What are some of the stories, especially if you sort of rewind a little bit and think about your early careers and your early moments of trying to test out your big ideas and get buy-in for them? What were some of the challenges you came up against both internally inside your own mind and also um, externally as you as you work to try to get other people behind you and supporting and your big ideas? Uh, mine was don't ever let perfection be your barrier for action. Because we as women don't think we can get really going until we know everything is perfect. We'll never ever is anything going to be perfect. If we stop, if we don't start, we'll, we'll just never get started. I always say uh, people get overwhelmed uh, analysis paralysis. They analyze so much and sometimes just get stuck in their own way and never get out there. There's plenty of days to think about all the good, the bad, and the ugly, but having faith in yourself and that self-confidence and never doubting yourself and knowing that the people along your side, your mentors, your other women friends that you can ask, your peers, what do you think about my idea? Do you think it has merit? Don't be afraid to let other people help you along this journey. We have a lot of experts that help Debbie and I every day, and we're still Absolutely. learning every day. And our experts learn from us. So we, we heard a great thing the other day, Debbie, you want to explain that personal board your personal, oh, yeah, your personal board of directors, which I'm sure you have, Katie, which we need to add Katie to ours. Yes, uh, we do. Where we have those women, because let's face it, women, we can have the negative Nellies in our head more than, I think women do are gifted with that, whereas men not so much. <laughs> yeah. But we got that little thing on our shoulders saying, you can't do it, you can't do it, you know, the ego, if you will. So we have to not listen to that. And then when we have those moments, like Stay said, we have those moments of, of doubt or insecurity. Take five minutes to yourself. Take a breath relax and say, you know what, what's the worst that can happen? I've got my health. I've got my independence. Go for it. 50% chance they're going to say yes. And if they say no, ask why they said no. Mm, Find learn. out why. Said, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Learn from it and then go forward. But we're very blessed, Stacey and I, and with, when Linda's with us, we really look toward what are our goals we want to accomplish and we figured out how we're going to get there. And I think some of that's probably age, but we go forward because we want to model that for other young women, not to be, I mean, you might have a little bit of hesitancy, but as we say, stop, take a breath and go for it. Yeah. Focus on it. the positive, yeah. maintain your optimism, get support and play and explore new ways of seeing and being in this world. The worst thing about it is sitting there just oh, wishing yeah. you had a woulda, coulda, or trying to go it alone and not learning how to delegate and you get stuck. We all need help. No one can do it on their own. We cannot control everything. Although we as women try, <laughs> we need help from each other. So it's all about, you know, latency. Don't put it aside. Don't get analysis paralysis. Get rid of that self-doubt. And the secret to success is being resilient. 
And I, Irma Brombeck, who you may not know who she is, Katie, but you know, <laughs> Irma Brombeck was yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know her? Yes. Oh, her she books, amazing. Her humor, just everything she did. And I remember reading one of her cards and Stacy and I said this all the time. You want to, when you end that life journey, you want to go sliding in, dirty, beat up, scarred, and knowing you gave it all you had. <laughs> yes. The first thing yes. It's true. Is to get there and think, oh my gosh, I wish I would have done that. I wish and to be down. Mm -hmm. That would be horrible. Yeah. yeah. That's not going to be. That's, That's not, not going to be, be us. Not gonna be us. Or you either, Katie. We may fail a couple of times, but those are the things we learn right. the most from us with the things we failed at. Keep those going. were the most exciting moments that we turned around and made positive later. That we laugh about that. Yeah, we laugh about it now. It was such a big thing then. <laughs> oh, my oh God. for sure. For sure. It's so it's so instinctual to, for me anyway, and I think for a lot of the women founders or entrepreneurs around me to, you're right, get stuck in analysis, get, you know, really want control over how how we decide to make the, mess, the next move or scale up. And mm -hmm. it's interesting. This year, I, I have a theme for the year. Do you want to hear it? Oh, share it, share it. We're going to write it down. Get your paper out, Debbie. Because it speaks so exactly to what you're talking about, and it's momentum. Oh, yes. Oh, my. I cannot even believe you talked about that. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? At, at church last Sunday, that was the thing. Really? Action, momentum. Yes, they talked about it. It yeah. was so you are follow so the momentum. Follow where it's at, where it's leading, and instead of trying to force things that you thought were going to work when you first concepted them, and and really pushing toward them, and and kind of fighting an uphill battle, don't do that. Just listen and observe, and find and hear the momentum, and then follow it and build upon it. Let it snowball. Oh, oh that's, that's such that's great, great advice. Okay, we got it. We you got are so that. we learn from our Katie. <laughs> vice versa but you are the ones really saying it it's just it's another reminder to me that I can trust in that and uh, yeah. I don't have to question every single tiny micro movement so okay failure why mm -hmm. is failure so hard why are we so afraid to talk about it well sometimes we we look at it as a uh, reward loss or you know failure is it going to be did I lose on my financial result? Um, or how people judge us. How did people judge us? Or could I have improved that employee engagement or higher retention rate? Did we fail at innovation? Were we not productive enough? What what could we have improved with that customer service satisfaction? Did we fail our consumer? You know, we always say our 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 I think this thing for, for me this year, my best advice is never lower our standard ever product service or or what we share with people. I love Just that. That never lower our standard just because maybe a little bit more cost effective or it may be less time consuming. Just know that everything we put out is 150%. And, and to that point too, I, I also think, Katie, it, it, this is such a fascinating conversation because it's, it truly is real. We're just, you know, three women sitting here together around the table talking. But I think too, and unfortunately, um, sometimes we're, obviously we're our own worst enemy, but also because and this is the dark side of social. I always say social to me is one of the best things we have, but it allows people to go on, unfortunately, and say unkind things, mm -hmm. never ha be held accountable, mm -hmm. never be asked to support it and say unkind things about others, sometimes with no proof, no whatever. And, and people see that or read it there. They don't want that to happen to them. Mm -hmm. So they're afraid to share and to be real. Yeah. Unfortunately. But we help each other so much more when we are real and Stacey and I try really hard to do that in our community. Yes. Um, we, we authentic, exactly. Be authentic, be transparent because we're all in this together. Absolutely. And when we do that, we model for others that it's a safe zone. That's right. It's a safe zone. That's right. So, Debbie, so right. And if we, if we found out Katie, if we, at the end of the day, you had a failure, ask yourself this, what went wrong? What's not working? What's missing? If you ask yourself those three things, what's working, what's not working, and what went wrong, and what am I missing, three or four things, you'll figure out, oh, I don't have to be fearful. I now know what I didn't do I should have done, and if I'd have gone with my gut, I probably would have done it, but I was too fearful to do it, mm -hmm. so I didn't put all my all into it. Um, just those, and sometimes it it's helped. not the right time. Right, right. Sometimes timing is best, wrong. Absolutely. The best idea, but you not can the right put, time. It, put best, best practices, but if you don't address the red flags and figure out how to make them right, you'll never see the golden carrots. There's so many things out there that are waiting for us, but sometimes we're not present in the moment and we can't see it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's sort of about like how fast can you learn? 
from the mm. failure and yes. uh, get out of the sort of self-criticism of it. And I think as leaders, too, uh, you know, for anyone who is managing or in a leadership position, you have a responsibility then to be willing to own up to failures and admit when right. something didn't go wrong and kind of take the blame for it, too. That's uh, Oh, yeah. Especially as leaders. When your people see you implement that, their whole mindset changes, too. Like if they see that you're not perfect and you, you're supporting a systematic change, maybe in your enterprise and your organization has a certain culture. But if everybody's always right and nobody ever learns from the things that went wrong, people, people take they'll never take responsibility yes. of that either. Yeah, we they'll never be that. bold. They'll never, never be bold. bold. And the leading edge in your company will be lost. Absolutely. So uh, l let's talk about storytelling now, because you've both grown brands that are, you know, globally recognized at this point. How did you craft a brand story that resonated on a global scale? Well, my first brand story was shopping television. People would say, oh, back in the day, 24 years ago, when my husband and David and I first started and we had one product and we were going to TV, they're like, that's really, that's really gutsy. Why don't you just do a brick and mortar? You know, Macy's, Nordstrom's and, and Bloomingdale's, they all want your product. Why don't you just go there? And I said, well, I want to do something different. I want to be a pioneer. I want to do something innovative that nobody's ever thought about. And they're like, well, it'll never work. You're trying to sell color <laughs> cosmetics on TV. Who's going to know their foundation color? How are you going to match a woman to her concealer? I said, because I'm going to show her. So the first time I walked out onto a set, my host and my network at that time, I was at the queue. Uh, I walked out with my hair and rollers and no makeup. <laughs> and I started to tell a story about being an international model for 20 years. And these are the things I learned from other amazing makeup artists. I'm not a makeup artist. I'm just like you out there watching. And here I sat in my Velcro rollers and my I think you no still makeup. have those rollers. I still, I wear them every day. <laughs> every time I'm on a network, I still do it. After 24 years, Katie, I still do the same story. I've never left my story. It was my niche. Before YouTube was even popular and all the young women I was, now, I was <laughs> about to say, is that it's <laughs> so wild. It, it, it's actually <laughs> such a huge cultural narrative now. You can go and watch, you could watch makeup video tutorials on YouTube for hours and hours and hours at this point. And they're really, <laughs> they're really compelling. It's because it's, it's related to someone on a very personal and relatable scale. We don't typically see our coworkers or our colleagues uh, without makeup on in their home in their robes. So that was a vulnerable thing to do. What, what gave you the bravery to do that? It was Well, it was scary and it happened by things happened by mistake. And I said it once in my TED talk that I said it was it was happen chance. You know, it was like the guy before me who was on air live TV was finished 35 minutes before his time. And they came in my green room and I had just gotten my hair and my Velcro rollers and I didn't have my makeup on. They're like, and this I is thought her first TV show. My so you're two, a nervous my, wreck. I'm a nervous wreck. And I thought I had 40 minutes and my husband's home with our baby in Long Island, New York. And I'm at Pennsylvania and I'm by myself in a green room. And I was like so nervous. And we had, we had storyboarded out exactly how I was going to do my presentation. Well, when he walked in and said, you, you're going to be on in five, I called David and I said, David, I'm so nervous. My hair's in rollers. I don't have my makeup on and I'm not ready to go on. I'm on in five minutes. They're coming in to mic me. He goes, you know what? This is a gift. <laughs> my <laughs> jaw is on the floor right now. <laughs> I am a nervous wreck, right? He says, you're going to walk out like women do every day and you're going to show a woman how to dress her face from start to finish and go from bare to hopefully beautiful. And at the end of that hour, if anything happens, at least women will have, will have learned the process, how to contour, how to light, how, how to highlight, how to put shadow on. If your cheeks are a certain size, shape or size, your face shape, this is how you do all the processes. And he goes, just like women have always, and men, makeup artists are always done to you, you're going to show women how they can do it in the ease of their own home. Well, by the first 45 minutes, Katie, the network was crazy. They were wanting to yank me off the network. I had not sold a thing. <laughs> the producer comes in the ear of the host and says, we're going to go to break. Tell the women at home they can buy something. We are flatline. Nobody's purchasing. So we go to a break. I don't have an earpiece in at that time in my career. Now I wear two in both ears and the producer, they're all talking to me why I'm on a show. <laughs> but back then they're telling the get her off, get her off. They go to a break. One minute later, she had said, we're going to go to break now. Remember, ladies, we know you're watching Stacy, but you can buy these products, too. We go off to break. We come back in 60 seconds. The whole show, $2.3 million was sold out. 
Oh my goodness. They, wow. What did we learn? We learned that women wanted information. Exactly. Yes, they were yes. tied to that television set because they wanted to know how to do it. Yes. So as soon as they found out how to do it, they were like, now I've got to go and buy everything. Well, the last 15 minutes of the show, which was unheard of, we were sold out so soon. We took 15 minutes of Q&A and women called in and said, I've always been intimidated to walk up to those beautiful women at the counter and ask them a question. It was so nice to watch you tell us how to do it. And you're just like us. And we realized that moment in time, we had found a niche no one else had ever done. And we made it comfortable for women to buy and have no risk. It's incredible. It's really, and now I think there's this is such common knowledge that it, you almost have to you have to go back and remember this was learned, and because you know the idea of leading by creating value added content that is informational that makes someone's life better, and that's not just telling them what to buy. That that now that's so common and, and understood as a content marketing and all of the reasons why it works. But um, you were really one of the really early founders, adopters, really of of content marketing. It's really cool. By yeah. by accident. <laughs> <laughs> It's brilliant. <laughs> even a, even my dad would say even a squirrel finds a nut sometimes. <laughs> and that's what happened. <laughs> well, I think that's a little too humble. But truly, I I love that image of you. I, I could never, I don't know that I could ever do that. I, if you're listening to this podcast, I would love to hear in, in the comments if you could ever walk on to a stage ill prepared, you know, 30 minutes early yeah. before you were actually even ready and and take on that spot and change your plan. And see your host eyes get big as silver dollars when you walk out on this set and her name is, is Tracy and she was my host and she said, Katie, Stacy, you do realize we're on a live set and we have a hundred million people watching us. I said, yeah, I'm fine. I just wanted to come out and show women how to do it. And she was just like wanted to kill me because it was so not planned. But at the end of that hour, they said, we made history. We've never had an hour that 45 minutes that did what you guys did in volume. And that from that moment on, I had a full blown show. I come out with eight products. The next thing show I came on, they said, we need five times that many items in a show because you'll just blow through everything. And I've just been blessed and honored to do what I've done for 24 years. I love that story so much. So it's it's really, have you, so I think then content marketing and providing guidance and information and privileging that and, and giving consumers what they most need um, instead of sort of keeping that behind intellectual property or instead of sort of only trying to um, sort of hit them with ads. That's been something that's been a really powerful part that drives your brands, right? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But now Debbie's done that in social media forever. I mean, Debbie, remember the first time you started doing social media? What was it like the first time and what it's, yes. like, what it's like now? So, <gasps> so my first career is education. And when I left education, I knew I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to, to go into entrepreneurship, but I didn't know what, okay? Truly didn't know what. So I spent two years learning everything I could on social media and learned from some of the, the biggest guys out there today and actually still am friends with, with some of them. But I started doing LinkedIn because it's a professional platform and it was more in line with education. But when I started doing LinkedIn, what I did was different than what everyone else was doing because I knew how children learn to read. I knew how to keep a person on a page. I knew how to get people to engage. I knew the, you know, the, the, specifics, if you will, of, a, of looking at a page full of print with no paragraphs, no caps, you know, that which is what it was at the time. So people started reaching out to me, hiring, wanting to hire me. I'll never forget the first guy. He messages me and says, can you do for me what you've done for you? I'll never forget it. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've got an issue here because I was doing, pro you'll, you'll look at my LinkedIn profile, you'll see I have stars. So when I put those stars in my name, I'd love to tell you I planned it and I'd love to tell you I was smart enough but it yeah, was like by, accident, <laughs> by accident i put the stars there and at the time linkedin had a policy you could put nothing in the spaces with your name and i'm a huge rule follower stacy will tell you that yes. however for some reason i thought i love the stars i other people would do that and linkedin would tell them to take it down they never told me to take mine off and now they allow it now they encourage you know they don't it's okay out of default to put things in your in your namespace but i was doing linkedin differently and so literally that's how my career started that's people incredible 85 probably 85 87 percent of the people that i first did work with in the first two years i never met 
probably half of them I never talked to on the phone. Mm. They gave me a credit card. They told me they wanted their LinkedIn profile done. I did the research. I did it and it was done. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, seriously. And that's how it and they're and their Fortune 500 yeah, CEOs they're, they're, and they're, executives. They're yeah, amazing. Attorneys out of Hollywood to college presidents to everything else. So yeah, it's oh. always it's funny how things happen by accident. Yeah. Out of need. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So you know, being able to communicate your professional identity and not just the innovative work that you're doing, but sort of your personal take on the world is so incredibly important. And doing that publicly now, there's more pressure than ever for C-suite leaders, especially even those who maybe in earlier times may have been able to sort of keep quiet, like heads of research and development or chief technology officers. Now they're really expected to be uh, present for their brands and on a personal level. So what advice do you have for innovators uh, in terms of how they project their presence and, and establish thought leadership on social media? So I have a huge, and again, I always go back to education because that's my, that's my uh, background, my experience, and, and I'm huge with, with, as Stacey said, being a lifelong learner. I always can't, when I speak, and I'm very fortunate to do that for a lot of different places and what we do with Women's Leadership Live, talking to women about their businesses, I always say, be the person in real space that you are in digital space be because no first of all no one wants to hang out with a negative unkind i mean they don't want that right people want to hang out with positive happy people and anyone who knows stacy and i know that we what what they see in personal life they see on on digital space so so think of and i when i speak to colleges which i do quite a bit to young people i say to them think about where you want to be in five years that's the person you need to be online because People think things are private. They think they can take things down. There is no such thing as, you know, Katie, everything is public. And if it's not, if people have the right tools, they can find it. But be online the, the positive person you want to be. Stacey and I always joke that we love that we are public online 24-7. 365 days a year and our picture always looks really good no matter what we look like <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you want to say how can you help people what do you offer because as we said all along we we're here for a reason we try to help women in their business we're on this tour with our magazine uh where women create work, women working for a stronger America. And the whole focus is women in business. So everything we do, we're modeling how they, how, what we do, what works, what doesn't, but digital space is huge because you only have, you're limited with physical space. And I use the term rules of engagement. Um, our son was a Navy SEAL for 10 years and in the military rules of engagement is differently is different. But for me, rules of engagement means there's certain, if you treat how you treat people in real space is how you treat them online. So I always joke, don't just hit the hit the like button because if you just shook your head and said yes, yes, yes when people are talking to you, they're going to stop talking to you. People want you to comment, they want you, you to engage, they want you to build relationships. So long long answer, but that's I feel strongly that online presence and what we teach people in that regard is, is important to their businesses. And it's always about us being of service. Absolutely. How can Absolutely. we help support you and your dreams? What mm -hmm. it, what are those dreams look like? And we help first and foremost, we always try and help women be impactful for themselves, their families, and their communities. And let me have one more thing that okay. I'm so sorry. So online, we, we tell women, don't go from a place of scarcity. Don't, don't think that the pie is only so big. We live in a big, bright, beautiful world. There's plenty of work for everybody. So we try really hard, the women that we have, to continually support them and share their stuff online because, because there's enough for everyone, right? So don't just think you have to be in that scarcity mindset, be in an abundance mindset. And Absolutely. digital space affords you the opportunity to do that. And Debbie, when she says that piece of pie, we learned that from our friend who's also one of our service contributors for our Women's Leadership Live members, and she's a, an amazing t attorney. Uh, she's incredible. And she goes, I don't know why people always think they have to hold everything yeah. in and like that their piece of pie is their piece of pie. Why don't we just she all so think cute. about making a bigger pie? pie. <laughs> <laughs> she's right. Yeah, she's right. She's so right. The Amy pie, Stewart, the yeah. yeah, Amy Stewart. She's incredible. All legal, a law firm of all female uh, attorneys. They're incredible, but it's true. They and they think about that. They don't right. think about scarcity. They the mindset is there's enough for all of us. Right. If there's not enough, we're gonna go make we're more pie. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> The, the mindset of abundance is so yes. evident in everything that the two of you do on a personal level and what I see out of Women's Leadership Live. And you mentioned, too, the magazines Where Women Create and Where Women Create Work. Mm -hmm. I 
love, obviously, the story-driven aspect to what it is that you do, that uh, both of those magazines are in, are show, showcasing, really, these powerful stories of, of women in their places of work or where they're creating their work. And uh, you also, of course, sort of inspiring more story sharing among women. But uh, tell us more about those efforts and about your national tour this year where you're visiting different cities. So, so we, we like to think of that stories are our DNA, everything that we, we live and breathe, we come through our, and when we tell the story, that DNA is transferred to someone else. We're able to share the message. So we wanted to celebrate the magazine where we create work, women working for stronger America. And we've got 13, um, million women small business owners in this country those are the stories we want to tell right we want those women to be able to tell their stories some are in the magazine obviously most are not Mm -hmm. but we want to be able to share those stories women in business that's our tour that's our motto that's our mission it's always about helping women in a collaborative form and we talk about economic policy we talk about sociologic policy and how really in today's lifestyle it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on we all come together as women at the end of the day just know the facts and how it helps your business and that your voice is your vote right just go out and do what you know is best for your community and we hold high self-esteem to women that just say i'm going to get out and do the right thing because i want to take care of my family and my country and i have you know i have a faith that we all have faith different faith bases we just have to protect those things and take care of them as we see fit right is this the first issue that's focused on work versus maybe more creative or lifestyle companies Oh, not at all. Joe Packham, the creator of Where Women Create Work. She has three other magazines, Create, Cook, and What. And then Work is her fourth magazine. And so we've done three with Joe. And uh, this one was a special one because, again, we were really wanting to, to share those stories of women in business, if you will. And so we've got women throughout this magazine who are sharing their stories. Uh, one that I'll that I'll talk about is here in Dallas, Texas. I'm in Dallas and Stacy's in Florida and then Linda's in Connecticut or, or D.C. But one of the stories is Amber Fletcher. And Amber is from the fa- Have you ever heard of Fletcher's Corny Dogs? No. Okay, they're sold at the, at the grocery stores in the frozen food department. Oh, oh yes, 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 I have, of course. I know what you're talking about. Yes, sorry. Oh, Took me a second, oh, but I had to visually see the colors of the brand. <laughs> yes, right. exactly. Right. Oh, very good, because hers is the red and the yellow. Yes. Exactly, right. yes. It's a very funny story. So I was doing a TV interview. We were down in um, Waco with a dear friend of ours, Brian Glenn, and we were doing an interview, and we're in the green room, and I meet Amber. And as Stacy and I always do, we meet dynamic women who have a story. We want to get them involved and collaborate. So I told Amber, Amber about the magazine, and we invited her to be in it. And so she's a beautiful redhead. Her daddy started the company, I don't know, 40 or 50 years At ago. Least. Yeah, he's passed on. But Amber's in the magazine telling them her story of a, of a company that was started before she was born. And now that she's running with her mother and I think her brother, but it's a beautiful story of, of what she's doing. And so, and it's a legacy story. It's a legacy story. It's like no other. I mean, it's incredible and, and powerful. And we've got so many women in this special edition for a stronger America. And it's all about where we're, we are women. We are educated, we're empowered, and we want to exercise our right to be awesome and succeed and unite as women. So that are, that's what our tour is about from March all the way to December. And it's just it's a national tour. It was supposed to only be four weeks. Yeah, last now, year. Yeah, last year we did a month. We did a month, but so many people who have invited us. Like we're so excited to be coming to Cincinnati. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yeah. so we're excited too to host you. And it's been, really we we've together formed this concept of an event called Untold Stories of Women in Innovation. And we have different leaders. We'll have Kathy Fish, who's the Chief Research Development and Innovation Officer at Procter and Gamble, and Candace Matthews, who founded one of the first minority accelerator programs. And Wendy Lee, who, of course, is a startup and tech advisor. And And what we love is that you guys are giving us a platform where we can just all be frank and open. And I think pretty much that's what your podcasts have all been about from what we're hearing. And you're just letting people have a conversation. And we're looking forward to hearing from our our former former panelists there with with you. I mean, we're we're probably going to be listening as much as we're talking. (laughs) (laughs) Such awesome Uh, women. Well, I think of all, there's so many rich 
uh, takeaways from our conversation, but I think that that willingness to learn and that humility to uh, to really be be vulnerable and open yourself up to uh, learning and hearing from others and and being in relationship those are the things that I am just so grateful to see modeled in two leaders like yourself. And um, I, I'm so thrilled that you chose us to stop on your on your tour and uh, that we can kind of keep this conversation going and and keep spreading the word for women to to share their stories and to celebrate one another because anyone who has ever had the guts to start a business it is just such an emotional roller coaster and it's yeah. it, it takes so much stamina and it takes so much community so um, yeah, deter- I, a lot of determination and motivation and persistence you are right Katie can I share one more story of someone who's in the magazine of course please this is in a, this is in alignment with social media. So Kathy Bissell, her family actually started by a woman in the 1800s, started the Bissell Vacuum Cleaner Company, right? And so Kathy is the daughter-in-law of, um, I'm not sure where the, the lineage goes, but anyway, mm-hmm. Kathy Bissell is a huge proponent of working with animal shelters around the country, and she has the Bissell Pet Foundation. 4,500 yes. pet shelters around the nation, and yeah. she travels to them. To, to wow. help you get dogs spayed and neutered to help adoptions and chipping, Mm -hmm. but she's very, very active and very passionate. She has four beautiful black labs, uh, uh, rescue dogs herself. And but she's we, in the magazine. Yeah, we wanted her in the magazine. So I went on social. And this was all authentic. We had supported her. We, we share her stuff. We commented. And so one day I think, okay, it's time. So I sent a private fe- Facebook message to Kathy and z- told Kathy what we were doing. We'd love to talk to her. Left, gave my cell number. God's truth. 15 minutes later, she calls me. She's in the magazine. So you, you wow. have an ability to reach out to people who have common interests and values, and you can work collaboratively we couldn't have done that without, without social, social media, media. We that's right yeah. yes. no years. it would have been like find her publicist now get her press yeah. release person now it, who can we contact <laughs> how we can you know it's just so much easier today your generation katie's so blessed i know to be, i know to be connections I, I know i this podcast is is one you know byproduct of that it's incredible that you know and, and i think the the technology combined with the guts and the confidence to just ask and the humility to ask. I mean, even the two of you having you on this podcast and so many of the other people who've been willing to be interviewed, they are, you guys are rock stars. And it's- oh, uh, you're <laughs> just like you have. Huh? We're just the honored. Thank you so much for having us. Definitely. And I think the important lesson for all of us is just ask. Yes. Absolutely. Don't be afraid. Absolutely. Yes. We're all just people. That's right. We all get up with rollers in our hair. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Debbie and Stacy, I, I adore you both. I'm so grateful that you made time to talk to the uh, podcast community today. And I can't wait to see you in Cincinnati. You can follow Debbie and Stacy at WWL Debbie Saviano on Facebook and at Debbie Saviano on other platforms. You can follow Stacy Shefflin at the same at handle and Women's Leadership Live as well. Ladies, I'm so grateful. Thanks for being here. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Thanks, Katie. Bye. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to follow us on social media and add your voice to the conversation. You can find us at Untold Content. 